the origins of Ethiopia and Nubia. Some of the oldest texts that mankind has at its disposal can be found in the scripts of the Sumerian and Babylonian Empire. In these texts we find descriptions and stories of the ancient kings of the rebellion seeking to take over the land of Cush, which they in fact did, and the Bible picks up from there as if they were always the rulers of this sacred land known now as Ethiopia. It, has, it had already been discovered that perhaps the Garden of Eden alluded to in the Bible was actually located in Ethiopia mainly due to the information given in the Old Testament describing four rivers that connected at a certain point which have now been found to all intersect in Ethiopia, the final river being located underground. Even deeper than this is the story of the proposed serpent of wisdom entering into the garden and providing the races of Adams and Eves with the knowledge of good and evil. Examining things more closely in search of the origin of many ancient stories of advanced serpent races, the Naga, also known as the Nagus, have come to the forefront. It has now been identified that this ancient serpent race was known to reside in Ethiopia in the beginning and later began to migrate into Persia. This has been found to be evident when looking at the similarities in Amharic, the native tongue of Ethiopia, and Sanskrit, the holy language of the Persians, used to control serpents amongst various other things. This language later on became watered down and became Hindi. The most uh, that we, the most that can be known about Ethiopia from literature in regards to ancient times, are mostly found in the Kibra Nagas. Notice the ending title, which clearly has its root in Naga. Most of this information presented in this book is centered around Queen Sheba, who was proposed in the Quran to be worshiping the sun until she was converted by Solomon. Since we know now that the whole lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which later led to Jesus, was all about sun worship, what was wrong with the sun that Sheba was worshiping? Could it have been that the power that was known to even hold back the horde of Alexander the Great had to be dismantled. For Solomon himself, we would have to have a whole video, but I would like to make something known. As an adept, one who studies esoteric knowledge in search of the truth, the name Solomon has been known to be none other than a three-part acronym. Sol, as you see in the Latin word, which means sun, Om being Sanskrit for the sun, and On pronounced own is Sumerian Babylonian for the energy that drives the sun. The stories of Solomon and Sheba go through various points where Solomon has tricked Queen Sheba to share his bed and have intercourse with him. From the offset this seems a funny story of love but I'm sure a woman would rather consent than to be tricked to have sex but as it seems to deny the king meant an overthrowing of her empire at the least. In the same story, it says the pretext of Solomon's curiosity of Sheba was the rumor that she had a hoof foot, a product of her mother's connection with the goat god Pan. It states that Solomon cured this problem, hinting to, uh, hinting to a hidden message of the possible practices in Ethiopia before Solomon enters the picture. This all, of course, being in one of the most relied upon books of the story of Ethiopia, Sheba, and Solomon. Moving on, a child is born from the union of Sheba and Solomon named Menelik. The Bible discusses none of this and it moves right along to Rohoboam, the not so wise son of Solomon. However, the Kiber Nagas claims that once reaching the age of maturity, Menelik was sent to Solomon's kingdom by Sheba, from which point he, re he was received uh, with open arms by his father. After growing in the kingdom, he makes his father vow to give him whatever he asked for, since he was a son who never asked for anything, despite that all that could be available to him. Solomon promises Menelik and makes an oath with him that he will give him whatever he asked for. In turn, Menelik asks for the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, to take the Ark of the Covenant back to Ethiopia for protection of his country. Solomon is grieved by this, but he cannot go back on his oath. This results in a plan that is carried out where Menelik kills even a priest to remove the Ark of the Covenant, which was then transported to Ethiopia where it is supposedly remains today. My only quell with this is 
this with this information of the exact location of the Ark of the Covenant is Hitler sometimes himself pursued, pursued every relic of power across the world with this paranormal division to accomplish what we now call the NWO. It does not seem wise to believe the Indiana Jones tale of the Ark of the Covenant burning up the entire army of Hitler. Of course all the wise know we never won that war and the Theosophical Society, the spiritual arm of the Third Reich, can be found right across the hall from the Joint Chief of Staff's office in the White House. So it turns out on several occasions there has been a heavy agenda to get into Ethiopia for reasons that I can't even channel. Maybe someone will come forth and explain what is the major precious resource of Ethiopia besides the beautiful women. The Queen of England saw it key to control and work on a vile plot to divide and conquer Ethiopia. The best strategy was one used several times in conquering various parts of Africa and was accomplished by Emperor Hala Selassie. This is now <clears throat> where the chosen people have to make a choice of whether to look at the obvious or forever to remain in the darkness of ignorance. First, one should know that the imperial family, Hala Selassie and company, were exiled into England. This of course means that several ties had already been made between the two parties. In fact, the truth is in the word imp which means lower entities that were known to roam the earth looking for people to possess. It seems these rulers are leaders of these types of empires or groups. This becomes a difference in rulers of the empires, the kingdoms, the dynasties, etc. Remember, the Bible says we wrestle against rulers and powers in high places, principalities and dominions, all of those being literal categories for various types of spiritual beings. It is good that they can all be controlled by one name. The primarily objective was to divide Nubia, making it later into Addis, Etria, and Somalia. When we say divide, we also talk about the people. The main way was to begin tribal wars based on the newfound religion Christianity. Can any Ethiopian at this point remember what they used to worship before they became Christian? The sheer lack of individuals who can answer that question shows how effective the job was done, so it became no need, to, it's no need for me to detail missionary stories here. This has been the most effective way uh, at controlling the manipulating and manipulating Africa. In this time, everyone did not want to be a Christian. Everyone who did not want to become a Christian became a martyr for their belief. It was Hala Selassie who allowed this to happen while the people trusted him. Seen in these several images, he is clearly constantly fraternizing like Kofi Annan with what we know to be the most decisive and divisive beast to ever walk the planet. These imposters have done the impossible through their empires entirely too long. It is good that they can be controlled by one name. If you are smart, you will learn the association of words for the adept. This we have dubbed the code to the matrix, which reveals everything. This news will find itself on the doorstep of the guided, who seek to know the truth so things may be made clear. It will also make it into the hands of the fool who sees within themselves that even if the truth is placed in front of them, they will deny it because these people are stiff-necked. So since the truth must come out before the close of this cycle, here it is. I will close without leaving out the fact that the unwillingness of the Ashkenazi Jews to admit the Ethiopians are the true Hebrews, blocking them from entering the Holy Land. I'm here to make the truth known. Tetragrammaton.